as you grab your Bibles. Spirit. 
And here's why I say that. One thing I read this week, which I believe is so true. When you allow the Holy Spirit to bear it, the fruit of the Spirit in you, something comes to us that we don't even realize is happening, and it's called strength. There's no reason for us to press our way and the Holy Spirit not give us the strength that we need to do what he requires. Amen. And so if you're like me this morning, dealing with tiredness, I want you to look at yourself and say, Holy Spirit, do your work. Come on, Holy Spirit, do your work. That's right, because guess what? When you give him freedom to do him, he's going to do him. And that's what we need. We need strength this morning to do what he requires. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to start out with this because I feel my strength coming on, even if I got to yell at myself. Hallelujah. But I want to start out with 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. Now, this is a familiar scripture to all of us. But I'm going to start out here. Verse 16 says, all scripture. How much is all? All of it. Everything. All scripture is inspired by God. Who's God? God? The Father. The Creator. Right? The self-existent one. He's, he's God. Amen. All scripture, I'm saying this for a reason because I want to get it in your spirit, is inspired by God and profitable. What is profitable? It's beneficial. It's rich. It's going to give you a reward. Profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction. Black folk don't like that, but it's true. Correction. For training. What is training? Training. Huh? It's exhausting. It hurts. It's not fun. Training in righteousness. So that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. This is the hour where the church can only function how it's designed. And I'm saying that because we have built churches outside of the word of God and expect it to reflect the word of God. You can't expect somebody to give you something that is not birthed in. You can't expect somebody who's not saved to give you fruit. I can't expect a thief to not steal. And I can't expect somebody who's used to fighting to not fight when violence is seen. Why am I saying that? So because I'm saying that because we have to get the church back to the foundation that it was built on. It was designed to show the work of God, right? So that today's pastors, check this out, need to train the church in the function of what God requires the church to be. So we need pastors today. This is why it's important to pray for leaders. You're praying for leaders for twofold. You're praying for the right ones to continue and to have strength and to have provision, but you're also praying for the wrong ones to sit down. Lord, let them be, let them get off the line. Let them get away from your people. God, it's time for them to move on and move out. If you're not praying for leaders, the question should be that if you can't get mad at them, you know, continuing. You get the question should be, why? How can I get mad when I'm not doing my responsibility as a believer? My responsibility is to do what? Pray for everything, everybody. Men are to what? Always pray. Pray without ceasing. Not coming to God like you want to. Now, oh, I'm here. What's up, God? That's good when you're a babe. But when you're mature in the faith, it's something that you need called reverence. Reverence leads you into prayer because you get this reverence from the word of God. Amen. And so this is where we, God is calling his church to function like it needs to be trained in so that we can show God not just spiritually, but physically and socially. Right now, the church is only operating in a social capacity. And this is where you see all the movements in church. But you don't see the spirituality in church because it lacks the word of God. And this is the stuff that gets us tired. But I promise you, if I was just somebody simple as T.D. Jakes, you wouldn't be tired. You'd be glued into what I'm saying. Something in you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't sleep on him because you know why? You would want to benefit from what he's saying. And in this small church, 
If he was standing up here right now, he can see everyone, but you're going to give him your attention. Not because, you know, he can see everyone. You're going to want him to give you something more. And if we can do that for personalities, how much more we need to do for God? Yeah. 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 This is facts. Now, you don't have to believe me, but check yourself when you see yourself doing it. When the Eagles play the game, you're like, oh, man, church was boring. It was tired. All right, come on. Where did that energy come from? Because that's who your faith is in. That's who your faith is in. Thanksgiving did a little lit. When I came to church, it was boring. That's who your faith is in. So don't get mad when God allows the I hear you, Joe, to touch your family because you pay more faith in them than you are in God.
Why? For you to continue something that they wasn't able to do. Live out his righteousness. Amen. Give him praise every chance you get. Lord, I thank you for what my grandmother gave me. But you allow me to live. And so now I have to continue in the areas of righteousness. I can't over magnify them. You get what I'm saying? Because if I'm making God out of them, you're going to hurt me now. People don't like this. But this is real. And this is where God is calling us. Tell somebody we got to function right. God is calling us to now let our theology meet our relationship. When you look at Carlton Pearson, oh yes, I said it, I'm going to say it. Because Carlton Pearson, he could have started out right, but where how he left this earth was the fruit of error. And so we have more problems now in the church because he passed away a couple days ago. Oh, wow. You know the problems that we're having? We're watching more and more people that you thought was sound come out and say why his teachings were right. Oh, my God. I watched Ricky Dillard come out and say Carlton Pearson told me that I can be gay. And I'm happy that I'm still good being gay. But you sing your songs though. You see how close that is? Ricky Dillon is comfortable being gay, but every church, somebody right now in church is singing his songs. If you don't know his songs, you know, and he's the some person that sometimes will, he is what, but that may be too old for you. You know what I mean? Uh, what's, what's it? God is the joy and the strength that he, re, he re, uh, did that one. But what's, what's the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the newest one he came out with? It's like that church job. You could have been a crackhead. I don't know that song. <laughs> but his songs is, are now household songs in church. But he's happy being gay because Carlton Pearson liberated him. See, but see how close this is? I'll do you one better. We already knew George Bloomer was weird. But who did George Bloomer birth? Now you start to get into the things and people that's coming out of them. Now you get into your Michael Todd's and your Travis Green's and your all of them who came from all, who caught to Pearson. See how close that is? But y'all have to get to their churches though. This is corny to y'all. But then because they got the loudness, they're sitting there believing something I was going to show a video, but the Holy Spirit said, no, because the people should automatically be in a place of seeing because I'm speaking. Yes. Yes. How can't you see this? This man has taught the gospel of inclusion. And he'll tell you in a minute, I don't take the Bible literally. I take it now, the Bible. I take it, you know, you know metaphorically. Which literally means I take it as I take the cat in the hat story. It's a, it's a steak. So if you're, not, if you're rejecting the Bible and calling it fake, I can't now, because you're dead, sit here and say, oh, man, well, Azusa Street was so awesome. But out of Azusa Street, he gave the platform to the Clark sisters, and we see where they are. Kirk Franklin had the platform, and we see where they are. Ron Zell Pratlow, I'm sorry. It is what it is. He, had that, he gave them the platform. We can go on and on. Released a statement asking people to give to him last week. Give to the family, give to him because he's my brother, and we're sad that he passed. You know, but his his memory and his teachings will live on. Paul Martin. Let me give you scripture for this to make sense. In the last days, many will walk away from the faith, and they will run to the teachers who's going to teach them error. And this is where we at. People are literally, these are household names. Let Paul Morton come to Philadelphia. People will break their neck to get to him. But they believe in the gospel of inclusion. And I'm saying to say to you, you should have an attitude that the enemy is able to wreak havoc in the church. You should have an attitude. You should not be comfortable with this stuff going on because you should be too busy in prayer. Lord, shut it down. Any idol that's over you is demonic. Shut it down. The question is, how much did 
did y'all pray this week when y'all was too busy celebrating? See, Thanksgiving at my house, call me weird, but we're going to get holiness out of these kids. Thanksgiving started off, grab your hands of your neighbor. Are we in church today? Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for another year. Yeah, because I, somebody could have been gone. They, I could have been gone. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I think about these things. Lord, if I die today, who's going to care for my family? Let me tell you what's going to happen. Yeah. Outside of normal, people going to be like, oh, man, he's gone. Then you will have men that ain't even pay attention that's going to move in on my life. Well, else you still young some way. This is real. You will have people now trying to infiltrate in my house. I can now control it. I can now fix it. I'm going to take these kids and do what I want with it. This is how the enemy works. Do you see this? See, all this is happening because we don't get back to a spirit of grateful. I thank you that I'm still able to live, which means I can get righteousness out of my house. And we, God is calling the church back to this place. It's not a fun place all the time. We had a great service last week. Shout, we threw chairs out the window. All that great stuff. But then when we have these Sundays, you know what he called? This is called, it's time to listen up. Because something is coming and it's going to hit, it's going to rock the church world. I'm telling you. It's going to rock the church world. And I want you to get ready for it, because whatever that look like, you know, we're not going to be ignorant because we have sound doctrine here. I'm telling you what it is. The government has been planning. The church world has been planning. And all the stuff that they're planning is contradiction to the word of God. And if you don't listen up on Sunday, you can be the reason that you fall into it. Amen. Look at verse 14. It says, for this reason. Now, just to give you some history real quick. This is the introduction of Paul's application or charge to, to, for the, the Ephesians church to apply, to do. This is literally, just so you know, is what we call in school Christian ethics. Okay? When, we teach, when they're teaching Christian ethics, one of the main passages they're coming from is Ephesians. Because it has powerful application for the believer. Here's the thing. Christian ethics is literally things you ought to do. But it's not things that we do. I'm going to let that sit in real quick. It's things we ought to do. You need to don't lie and live in the truth because this reflects God. But why does our actions always do the opposite? Because what's in our heart is not the theology that fuels righteousness. It's our theology that fuels sin. Because we come up with reasons, well, well, one more time ain't going to hurt. Just one more time, one more place, one more thing. And this is what's causing us to live in a, a posture of weirdness because we're not living in what we ought to do. Do me a favor, tell somebody, it's what you ought to do. We ought to do this. It literally means this is what we have to do to show God in every area of our life. Amen. Amen. Guess what? I go back to Thanksgiving. You showed your family love. <laughs> Since Judy baked us some pies and we was loving it, we tore them jaws up. Tore them pies up. That's why my belly hanging over today. It's like all them pies was gone at the end of the day. But guess what? Now I ought to work out. Do you, do you see that? I ought to get back in a place of training because I can't live in this place because high blood pressure, cholesterol, heart attacks, and all this stuff is coming if I live in this place. Do you see that? That's like what you ought to do. Don't keep entertaining sin because God, he gave you what you ought to do. Reject it. No matter, even with tears in your eyes, reject it. It hurts. Reject it. You live in it too long, you will die. And guess what? Some of, our, some of our deaths are slow. We're dying slow. Just because it ain't happening yet, you saying, well, I guess I got more time. No. Your steps in God went from like this to. And just because you show up, that don't mean you're still in God. I'm telling you, go to church. But I don't want you to call on the name of 
God from a pure heart. Don't ask him to remove, don't ask him, God to remove me from your heart. When you do that, you got a problem with me. But go to church, sing, clap. That stuff don't get you in the kingdom. Amen. Amen. And so here Paul is saying, for this reason, Christian ethics, I bow my knees before the Father. Now we hit on this a little bit last week, but where he's getting at is some versions may say, I fall to my knees. I fall to my knees. Paul is in prayer at this moment. He's in prayer at this moment for the Ephesian church because he wants them to not, to not just say, I'm saved. He wants them to pray out what he just taught. See, I'm about to hear on your theology. You thought it was just something you were supposed to house in your brain. But theology is given, which is the study of God, so that you can pray out God's will. See, and this is why most of our prayers aren't answered, because we're praying from our will, and it's not God's. We're not praying out what he said prayer should look like. We're not praying out what belief should look like. We're not even praying out what real faith is, because we're praying it from our perspective and not his mind. Real theology prays it out. Now that I know the truth, I'm going to pray according to the truth. And this is what Paul is getting at. He said, I bow my knees to the Father. Right there, back in the Jewish days, right, and the early church days, prayer, when they, when they called for prayer, everybody would stand and pray. And some of them, you know, they would have their eyes closed, but, but the concept or, or the custom was to keep your eyes open. Now, if you ever see a Jewish man or somebody from the early church fall to their knees, What's happening is that they're falling to their knees because they're asking God a request from intensity. It's from a place of humility and reverence like, I can't fix this. I can't do I need you. I'm relying wholly on you. Them falling to their knees was them literally saying, I'm surrendering. And so what Paul is showing here, you get what I'm saying? He's showing that at this moment, I did my part for you. I preach. I'm going to give you application, but I'm going to fall to my knees and pray that God fuels obedience out of you, that you get a reason to obey God. And this is what we do as pastors. Some of y'all walk sideways, but it's my job to keep praying you in the way. Facts. Every Sunday, this was the Lord challenged me with a few weeks ago. I saw calling everybody in the yard. Lord, let them press their way. Lord, let them press their way. Let them press their way. Name in every household that I can think of. Sometimes I had to go to social media. Oh, dear, that person right there. Oh, that, yeah. Look, let them come in. Let them press their way. I just seen you this. Ah, let them press, let them press. And when they come, God, meet them where they are. Amen. And so when, you, when I say press your way, I'm not saying press your way because it's something good to do. I'm praying that God meet you. But guess what? If my prayer is going to be effective, check this out. What do I have to do? Paul just showed me. I got to fall to a place of surrender. I can't control it. I can't fix it. My title can't house it. Nothing can. God, this is your job. Because these are your kids. So I got to fall to a place of surrender. Why am I saying that? This is where God is calling us to. If you surrender your position, you get to a place of stop trying to be high and mighty with God and come low to God. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he'll exalt you in due time. You got to get to a place where you surrender it. Like, Lord, I didn't, I didn't pray about this a thousand times, but you know what? I didn't pray from a surrender position. I didn't pray from your truth. I doubted my prayer while I said it. This is what we do. It's the right thing to do. Lord, just touch these kids. Touch them. I'm tired. I'm tired. How I pray, but I'm just tired of praying. But you're not praying right. Because you don't need with you don't even believe the prayer that just came out of your mouth. If you did, your your prayer language would have changed. It would have sound more like, Lord, I cannot fix this. This is your job. Yes. Because you're God. You are the I am that I am. You, when I go through scripture, I know who you are and I see what you can do. You get what I'm saying? You can give sight back to blind people. You can open up the mouth of my kids and get righteousness out of them. So I trust who you are. This is called praying out spiritually. Do you see that? I'm praying according to the word. I'm not calling them dumb names. I'm not saying they're weird. I'm, I'm putting the scriptures on my kids. Let his mind 
to the thoughts of the spirit so we can get righteousness. And you know what happened? When you do stuff like this, you hear lovely calling me this morning like, why is your son in here cussing me out, telling me I'm wrong? I'm like, what's going on? He said, you let daddy go to church by himself today. You let daddy go to church. You, you should have woke me up. She's like, change my back. It's hurt. I'm just so he said, You should have got prepared last night. He said it right, but I just had to sit back and be like, wow. He was like, at the end of that conversation, don't let it happen again, Mom. <laughs> she was like, well, next Sunday, if I got the beat crawling in there, I'm going to do what I got to do. But this is how you know you're praying right, because what's in his heart to get to church? Yeah. Do you see that? Yeah. He's not coming to church to get on the mic. He wanted to get to church into the house of the Lord and support his father. This will preach anytime you want to, God. Maybe that's why you need to go to church. Because the Father's presence is not there. You got to get it in here to carry it there. Do you see that? You're looking at home for something that's not there because it originated in his house. You get in God's house, you get his presence, and you can carry it to your house. Because now the carrier is not, it's not just this thing of magic that we like to say. It's all magic. And so this is why, oh, God, everybody can't touch your heart. Amen. And when they do it illegally, they try to and die because it ain't their job to touch it. <laughs> Although they meant well, that man meant well to study the art, but he still died in the presence of God because it wasn't his job to touch. And so when you see your heart that Like, 
you're right. You're right. You, you, that's crazy. Oh, that, I know what I would have did. Guess what? You just hindered the witness. You're the reason why your family can't come together no more. Because you're, you're continuing the discord. Do you see this? Yeah. You know, and I don't know why I'm hitting on it today, but I feel it so strong in the spirit. If we're going to get our families back to God, we have to get the name of God back branded on the family. We have to. And we're not just saying any kind of God. We have to be specific. I'm talking about the God of the Bible. God the creator. God the son, Jesus. And God the Holy Spirit. Because they're all three in one. I have, you have to be specific. Specific. Whatever the words is. Specific. 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 <laughs> And so, verse 4 and 15 is saying, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives his name. Check out verse 16. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man. Now, if you're really a Bible scholar, you should have sat here and asked this concept. How did the order get broken at this moment? We, Paul started praying to the Father, but then he skipped and started asking the Spirit to empower you. Now, normally, we go through Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But now he's saying, Father, Spirit, Son. Do y'all see that? I don't know if you're reading like me, right? Father, Spirit, and Son. Because we always fell the real principle of the Holy Spirit. He does an outer work before an inner work. And then when he does the inner work in us, it's only to empower, say empower. Empower us to continue in the name of the Son. And so when Paul is literally asking at this moment, he's asking for power. Somebody scream out power. In the Greek and Hebrew, that word is dunamis. Dunamis power, literally. He's asking for the root of power which is seen in the Holy Spirit to be seen in you. Don't tell me that you can't make it through hell and high water if you're empowered with the Spirit. Because nothing is conquering the Spirit if you're allowing the Spirit to do its job. I don't care if you're lonely, but the power of the Holy Spirit will now bring you into fellowship with the Son. How you're lonely, how now? They're, oh God, I don't have nothing to make ends meet. I have seen us make it on oodles and noodles and never forsake the name of God when we're empowered with the Holy Spirit. You, you can take oodles and noodles and stretch it when you're empowered. I watched mommy did it and something happens with black moms. They just know how to stretch it. You get three noodles. You get four noodles. You get this. But the way they season it, you be like, oh, snap. Yo, I'm full. Because they, they put the little strand of noodles there. Then they get you two slice, you get a slice. And by the time you sit here and you eat it all, you're full. But you didn't even realize as a kid that you was walking, working on a fixed budget. Yes, but you was working on a fixed budget because your mom was trying to make $20 stretch for the week. Because that she can do that because the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Little as much as when God is in it. Nothing is impossible when God is in it.
the outside. If your spirit don't look as beautiful as you do supposedly on the outside, you still horrible. You're going to get the man and taint him, hurt him, because your vertical is off. Once again, vertical is off, horizontal is going to be what? Green toxic. You're the witch everybody rebuke it because you ain't getting empowered inwardly. And guess what? You're the man that got all women, but you ain't marrying them because you're toxic. You can't keep them because you ain't let God keep you. I'm, I'm, I'm being honest. One thing that challenged me, and I'm going to say it, get mad at me later. One thing that challenged me was when I was dating lovely, I had a, a person come up to me with questions about our relationship. And this man was like, so you're about to go into the seventh year of dating her. I'm like, yup. I'm proud. Yeah. You'll see that today. You'll see that. I'm sitting there coming from that mindset, right? Like, yeah, I'm good. He said, you're horrible. Mm. It's taking you seven years to stay comfortable. But you know, you mean to tell me God didn't show you that was your woman? Wow. Well, how do you think about it like that? Yeah, you're weird. Because it don't take God all day to show you that this, I'm like, why he showed me? Well, what's going on with you inwardly? Why didn't you now wife your wife? Why didn't you take her on as a wife? Oh, because I'm dealing with some emotional issues. Ah, so you now you want to play along with her, hold her up, mess her up. Guess what? If you're not here, you're going to hurt her and you're going to be, she's going to be trouble for somebody else. Because what happened with us men, we hurt, we break women's heart and they get mad because we see the results of it 10 minutes later. My God. It's like, oh, snap, like, I knew she was always like, no, no, she got that from you. So what you literally see is you inside of the person you broke their heart. And so this is where God is calling us as men. You need to get healed inwardly. Because if you got a woman, you should, she should be dating you 10 years later. Amen. Amen. God, I wish that no man would be alone. This is scripture. Now, most of our men, and they hate me, Elder, for talking like this, but it is. It is what it is. Most of our men, if we do what we need to do, how happy would the human race be? How happy would the human race be if we start doing what we need to do? This is real. We have balance. We have balance in society because we got real men stepping up. Amen. I was telling Sister Destiny last night, I said, yo, I got, I got a man to hook you up with. I got a man to hook Sister Angel up with. I got a man to hook everybody up. Sister Rose with. I'm going to find I was sitting there, I said, brother Dave, and I told Pastor Dave, I'm going to meet with your pastor, and we're going to take all the single people from your church, take all the single people from our church, and we're going to come together and do some kind of speed dating, because these people need to get married. Amen. The joy of the Lord needs to be back in the church, because it needs to start back with marriage. Amen. Don't just get married for the sex. You get married because you know that this is the person God made for you. Amen. And then I'm telling you, most of the issues that we're having in church is the lack of fulfillment But they don't see a man that's giving more. Man, I'm telling you, y'all not even praying. I mean, y'all not paying for this stuff. This is real. I'm so serious. And if we get our men together, and I'm talking to the men in this corner, we get our men together. Because this is the only group of men, so we think. <laughs> get our men together. We can now get our women straight, which literally means we can get our households back on track. Which means that now we can get our communities together. Amen. We can get our city together. Amen. Now the kids that's out there looting will be in a house getting taught by real men, oh, wow. by real women. They can see an example of godliness. Amen. 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 But this comes from the empowerment of the spirit. Are you letting the Holy Spirit heal you internally? Facts. And I can, I'll say it. I don't know why the Holy Spirit is allowing me to say it, but I'll say it real quick. Most of the women that caused me to be a player happened because I was getting the, the remnants of who broke their heart. So they broke me, caused me, like, you know, I ain't getting played no more. Because if you really talk, you hit, like, really hear my heart, two things I, I, I just can't stand. I can't stand being played, and I can't stand being used. You do that, my God, I need to 
get to the altar quick. Because that, I'm telling you, those two things whoo, caused me to start unleashing. But I had to get down to why, why, why? Because I still ain't get hit for heal from that inner child. And so now we all, this is where how the Holy Spirit works. It will remind you where you first got hurt at. And he will send you a person that may look like the person that hurt you, but they're not in this season because they are empowered with the Spirit. So you got hurt by a woman, he'll send a godly woman your way to help you bring healing. You got hurt by a man, he'll send a godly man your way to bring healing. Yes. But if you keep rejecting all men because you got hurt, don't get, at, don't get mad at God because you ain't healed. This is facts. Because I'm not going to leave you in a place of isolation. I'm not going to leave you by yourself. I'll be less of God to do that. You don't have a reason to mock me. Do you see that? But if we don't empower him, we're going to mess up the whole world. This is what Paul is saying. So that the Holy Spirit can empower us inwardly so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Now, if you're not empowered with the Spirit, you ain't going to hold on to faith. You ain't going to have faith. You ain't going to have faith at all. Matter of fact, your faith is going to be conditional. And you still ain't going to have it because when they take the car from you, you're going to say, now God is against you because your faith was only in the car. They take the house from you. Man, see, God, I'm taking two steps forward and I'm taking five steps backward. Man, God. Because you, you don't know what faith is. We call faith what we want. That's the definition of today's faith. What we want. I'll have faith in a man because that's what I want. I'll have faith in a job because that's what I want. But I won't have the knowledge that fuels faith because I don't have the sun. Do you see that? Real faith in the Bible, in scripture, comes from the knowledge of Jesus. I know why I believe on him. So this is why I'm going to continue to show faith or give faith in him even when days are hard. See, the old folks had that right. I can take a water hose on me and still call, sing a hymn of praise because I know who Jesus is. But you want to sit here and say, defund the police? No. We need weird police like that to get the hate out your heart. Because you're still hating on people that, 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 that it didn't happen to you. It happened years beyond you. But you hating every white person because what that ancestors did. And you're still missing the point because the point chapter. 
verse 18, may be able to comprehend all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and depth and to know the love of Christ which surpasses all knowledge. Paul, real quick for it to make sense, is hitting on Romans 8. He's hitting on Romans 8, the part of nothing can separate you from the love of God. Basically, he's saying because the love of God is so wide, it's so deep, it's so vast. Nobody can comprehend it. Nobody can steal it. Nobody can take away from it. That's why he said, you know, it's, it's, so, it's so long, it's so high, it's so wide. Because at the end of the day, nobody can stop God from loving you. The issue that we have, because we're not arguing with that, we're arguing with that you can stop receiving God's love. And so now you can say, I don't want you today. Because you have the choice. You can choose God. He never, remember, he never wanted us with that choice. We were always supposed to choose God by default. But because of sin, we have to choose him. We have to opt in consciously now. Lord, I love you. Lord, I trust you. We never had to have that point. But the love of God is so big. It is so wide. And it's so abused. People abuse God's love and then expect him, you know, to be everything they want. And if he don't do everything that they want him to do, he don't love them. Yeah. That's not biblical love. Because did he take breath away from you? No. Is you able to go like this? No. He said no. <laughs> Are you able to say no? Yeah. Yes. Because at the end of the day, you get what I'm saying? No, I am not going to sin today. No, you ain't going to sit here and I'm allowing you in my atmosphere today. We don't even use no right. Amen. But we want God to continue to be God. If God stopped being God, where would we be? Yeah. This is real. If he said, I'm going on vacation, get ready. What you want at your funeral? I'm going to tell you what I want at mine. Matter of fact, ain't going to be nobody here to pray at a funeral. We just dead. If he stopped God, once again, what minister can you say, oh, thanks. Oh, give it. That's another reason of blessing. Thank you for being consistent. Thank you for being consistent as God. But check this out. Verse 20. This is where I was getting at. And we're closing out on this. And how many of you heard this preach so many times? Now to him who is able to do far above exceedingly beyond what we can ask or think according to the power that works within us to him be the glory in the church and in Jesus to all generations forever and ever Amen. and we take this scripture and we associate it with money now unto him who's able you can give this speech is not stop lying to God because now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and give you above what you can ask or think did you think of the house he can did you think of the car? He can give you above it. We jack this scripture up because it has nothing to do with money. And this is how we have a low view of God because nobody's putting the scriptures in context. This is a scripture about God. Now unto him who's able. God. He said who's able? Him. To keep you. Without him, well, I told you earlier, we need God to serve
everything. Money is not everything. But who is everything? Is God. So basically, I'm going to magnify myself in you. Even though you didn't ask me for the just kind of stuff today, I'm going to give it to you because you let me be God. Amen. Amen. Now, the next time you sit here and you say the scripture, don't you attach it to no material. You attach it to something spiritual. What's happened to you in inwardly is a result of something that you didn't ask for outwardly. Amen. I wanted to be healed, but I didn't know he was going to make me whole. I didn't ask for that. See, you get what I'm saying? I wanted to be delivered. I didn't know that he was going to make me free. What? You see that? He gave me more than I could ask for. Because when you hurt, all you want is just, oh, just heal me, just heal me, just heal me. I never prayed, make me whole. Do you see that? This is why God is so important. This is what we have to get back to. Amen. We have to put respect on God again. Amen. Do me a favor and say, I will. I, will. I want you to say with confidence. Say, I will, I will. fight, fight. To, have to have a high view, a high view. of God. And anything that caused me to contradict him and acknowledge, I want you to pull out 2 Corinthians 10 5. Matter of fact, somebody grab it right now and read it in the atmosphere. Anything that will cause you to fight against God in this hour and who we, the God that we're talking about, the true and living God. The God, the creator of the world, God, the son, God, the Holy Spirit, anything that will cause you to fight against that, even down to coming to church. I want you to say that. Matter of fact, when you get it, read it corporately as a church. That one verse, 2 Corinthians 10 5. One, two, three, go. That's all right, we're going to do it in concert. One, two, three, go. Read the word of God. Amen. Go. We destroy arguments and every thought captive to every thought captive that obey Christ. We destroy everything that contradicts him. I'm tired today. That's contradicting him because you was made to worship.